Real quick, before we get started, I just want to know who else out there is living that slab life. And if you're not living that slab life, you gotta try it. It's not a bad way to live. Anyway, as you can see, I just finished up this big old walnut slab live edge dining table and it was actually a really fun build. So I built this for a couple that wanted a live edge dining table and they picked out this particular piece from a bunch of slabs that Jonathan Katz Moses and a couple other local guys milled up probably a few years ago. And Jonathan actually has all of these slabs listed on his website. So if you like the look of this one, go check those out. I'll put a link in the description. But once we had the slab picked out, it was time to get to work. And the first thing I did was start flattening. Luckily, Jonathan had just built a slab flattening jig a few days before, so I capitalized on that and used his. He also made a great video about making it and using it, so go check that out if you're interested. But this was by far the biggest piece I had ever flattened like this, and it was a little daunting at first, but I just decided to take a slab at it. The slab was actually in pretty good shape when I got it, but it needed quite a bit to get it flat. It was about two inches thick when I got it, and by the time I had both sides flat, I was down to about inch and three eighths. And I used this monster surfacing bit. which is two inches in diameter, and it made the process go a lot quicker. Bits and Bits company was generous enough to send me this bit along with some others, and they also gave me a discount code to give to everyone watching. So if you're looking to get some new router bits, go check them out, bitsbits.com. And guess what? I'll put a link to that in the description. All right, so with the slab flattened, I could bring it back to my shop and start working on getting it cleaned up. I also cleaned out the crack that ran down the center of the slab. Once again proving that I think I would be a pretty good dentist. So with everything ready to go, I went ahead and filled all the cracks with epoxy. For this I used Total Boat with the slow hardener to try and get it as clear as possible. So with the slab at a good point, I could then focus on building the legs. This was a leg design that the client suggested, and once again, Greg came in clutch and cut me some perfect templates first try. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. You did a good job, buddy. So with my templates cut, I could start milling the lumber for the leg parts. And this was a good example of my milling process when I'm making smaller parts. What I like to do first is very roughly cut my lumber into smaller sections that maybe fit one or two parts. At 
I then mill all those individual pieces and get them to the same thickness. Once those are all flat, I then bring back my template and cut each part right to the line to get them ready for flush trimming with the router. The process might take a bit longer than milling the entire board at once, but it allows me to maximize the thickness that I can keep for each part, as well as doing everything with my 6 inch jointer. So with all my parts rough cut, I can then attach the templates using double sided tape. And use a template bit to trim each part about halfway down each side. I then can take them to the router table and use a flush trim bit to clean up the rest of each edge. The last step for each leg part before glue up was to cut the joint angles. And as usual, I did this on my table saw with some table saw sleds. One thing I like to do is cut the majority of the waste on the first cut, then come back and make a finishing cut, and that usually gives me the cleanest and best result. Finally, I could cut in some dominoes and glue up half of each leg assembly. So now with half of each leg assembly glued up, I could cut the 45 degree miters to attach the two halves together. The main thing here was that I needed the top and bottom joint to be directly over each other in order to get everything to line up properly. And I did this by making a 90 degree cut with my track saw along the top and bottom pieces. I also glued in a couple of small blocks in order to have enough width to make this curved joint at the bottom. I could then make the 45 degree cuts on my table saw, making sure to just hit that outside corner to make sure everything came together properly. Once they were dry, the last step was to cut that radius on the bottom joint of each leg assembly. And I did this with a template and a router.
So with the bases pretty much finished, I could go back to working on the slab, which needed some sanding at this point. And we also decided to inlay a couple bow tie keys to secure the cracks. I'm pretty sure the epoxy will be enough to stabilize everything, but we wanted to just be sure. Once those were in and everything was sanded, I could then get to finishing. And for this one, I used Maker Brand Simple Finish, and I'm really happy with how it came out. And I'm also really happy I had an almost full can because this happened about halfway through. That was a total bozo move. But at least now my floor will look nice, right? After the finish was dry and everything was looking good, I worked on getting the leg placement dialed in. Once I was dizzy from looking at the table upside down, I figured I had it about as good as it was going to get. So I marked the placement and installed some threaded inserts into the bottom of the table and attached the legs. So there you go, live edge, walnut slab, dining table is all finished. I am super happy with how it turned out and it was a lot of fun building this one. Like I said, links to everything I've talked about are in the description and my discount code for bitsbits.com is there as well. Check them out. Okay, that's it for now. As always, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this one. And of course, until next time, if your days feel like they're full of strife, make a change and start living that slab life. <laughs>